In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve weak, strong titration problems. So those could be problems involving a weak acid with a strong base or a weak base with a strong acid. Before we get into actually solving uh, one of the problems, it's important to note some of the differences that you'll see here between a weak acid strong base problem versus a strong strong problem. So for this particular example that we're looking at here, we have a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Uh, so the first major difference is that the pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than seven. The easiest way to think about this is that you have a weak acid but a strong base. So it's kind of like the base is stronger, so it wins out. So at the equivalence point, uh, you're expecting it to be higher or more basic. Uh, we'll go through uh, actually why this takes place when we're looking at the problem itself. There's also three other uh, specific differences uh, here that you can see in the graph itself. So if you look at this graph here, you can see initially here, the pH itself is not uh, as low, so it's actually higher or less acidic because you're dealing with a weaker acid. You can see the difference uh, at the bottom here as well. For the weak acid, it is much higher. Versus a strong acid, you would expect this to be lower. Um, there is a smaller jump in the pH at the equivalence point itself uh, compared to the strong acid has a much greater jump when you're doing a strong, strong type problem. And then obviously we already said that the pH at the equivalence point, if you notice here, the equivalence point is much higher than seven, whereas a strong, strong titration, the pH would be seven at the equivalence point. So these are some of the things that are different that you could see in the graphs themselves. You should be aware of these differences um, and understand why they actually take place. So this is just a summary of how to find the pH along the different intervals for a weak, strong titration problem. Uh, remember here, if you're asked to calculate the pH initially, you're going to have to do an equilibrium problem with an ice table because this is a weak acid or a weak base, and these do not dissociate 100%. Therefore, you're going to need to use an ice table to figure out the pH. At any point after the initial up into the equivalence point, uh, this is a buffering region because you have a weak acid or base and its conjugate present. So you would actually have to determine the concentration of the weak, determine the concentration of the conjugate that formed, and then plug these values into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Um, if you're at the equivalence point, this is where you need to figure out the concentration of the conjugate salt that formed and use an ice table with the hydrolysis reaction. Remember, this is not a strong, strong titration, uh, so you're not generating a salt that would be neutral at the equivalence point. Uh, because this salt was from a you know, weak acid, strong base, or a weak base, strong acid type, uh, whatever the strong is in the problem, that's going to determine where your pH is going to be and how your salt is going to hydrolyze at the equivalence point. Um, and then at any point after the equivalence point, uh, it, you're going to have strong acid or base remaining. So that's just a quick figure out the concentration and solve for uh, pH using negative log of the concentration of H plus or negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So it's very important that you understand how to calculate the pH along the different intervals. It's also very important that you understand uh, the graphs themselves. In this particular graph, uh, this would be a weak base being titrated with a strong acid. Uh, so you can see here, again, note the differences. Uh, initially, it's not going to be as basic because this is a weak base. Uh, at the equivalence point, you can see here that it's not at 7. It is lower than 7 in this case. Um, and then these are things that you have to watch out for. Uh, and without this stuff even being labeled, you could clearly see that this was not a strong, strong titration just from uh, where the uh, equivalence point is in this particular titration. All right, so let's do an example here. Um, and as you can see from this particular problem, we are adding some sodium hydroxide to 40 milliliters of benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a weak acid, so we have the benzoic acid would be in the flask, uh, 
and the sodium hydroxide would be in the burette being added to it. So this is a weak acid being titrated with a strong base type problem. So before we actually go through here and do the problem, remember it's very important to write the overall equation here for this reaction. So we have some sodium hydroxide, all right, reacting with the benzoic acid. Remember, for an acid-base neutralization reaction, we see a forward arrow here, and we typically generate a salt plus water for these types of neutralization reactions. So there's our salt plus water. And remember, this salt is going to be important. When we get to the equivalence point, we are not doing a strong, strong type of problem. So uh, when the moles of acid equal moles of base, uh, the salt here is actually going to be able to hydrolyze with water. And because this came from a uh, weak acid strong base, the base is stronger, we would expect this to hydrolyze uh, at the equivalence point to give us a pH greater than 7. Uh, so that's coming up later on, but always take note of the salt in a weak strong problem because um, that's how we get a pH that's different from 7. Uh, so to do the initial pH of the solution here, we have to remember that the weak acid present initially um, is there in the flask, and we have to actually do an ice table to figure out its pH because it is a weak acid. So we have the uh, benzoic acid here initially in equilibrium with its ions. Okay, so. Remember here, pay attention to the arrows in the equilibrium. Uh, notice the difference between the neutralization reaction, forward arrow versus uh, the weak acid uh, in equilibrium with its ions. So for our ice table here, we know the initial concentration of the acetic acid is 0.025 molar. We know that these ions are not present initially. This is going to lose some value of x. These both are going to gain some values of x. So we know our equilibrium values here by completing our table. All right, so uh, from this, we can write our Ka. We know the Ka for this particular equilibrium will be equal to the products over reactants. OK, so we can fill this out. This is stuff we should be pretty good at by now. Uh, products all over our benzoic acid. Okay, so in the problem, they gave us the value of the Ka to be 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. Plug in what we know from our uh, ice table. It's going to be x squared. Both of the products are x, uh, 0 0.025 minus x for the reactant concentration. Remember, we can do the approximation here. And when we solve this for x, we get x being equal to 0 0.0012 molar. Um, remember from our ice table, x is actually the concentration of the H+. Plus. Um, so now that we know the concentration of H+, plus, we can go ahead and solve for the pH. So pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H plus. So the pH would be equal to the negative log of 0 0.0012, which would be equal to uh, 2.92 here. All right, so anytime you're asked to calculate the pH initially, remember this is a weak acid or base, so you have to actually go through and set up an ice table in order to find it. Part B now actually asks us to solve here um, for the pH after 10 milliliters of the NaOH has been added. Okay, so remember, in a weak strong titration problem, any point from the initial pH up into the equivalence point, you have a buffer. So we have to actually go through this problem. We don't know if we're at the equivalence point yet or not. So we have to actually go through and see how much base we added here and compare it to the amount of acid we started with. Okay, so I know that initially here, I started with 40 milliliters of my benzoic acid. 
So we got to get this to liters here so that I can use my concentration to figure out how many moles of benzoic acid that I started with. So I have 0 0.025 moles here of the acid, all right, uh, for every liter. And when I calculate this, I had 0 0.0010 moles of acid that I was starting with. All right, so that's how many moles of acid I started with in the flask. Uh, in this particular part, I added 10 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to get this to liters so that I can figure out how many moles here were in that much. I have 0 0.050 moles of the base for every liter. So I added 0 0.00050 moles of the base. All right, so I can quickly see here that I did not reach the equivalence point. I added some base to neutralize the acid, but not enough to actually neutralize all of it. So I have to realize here that this is going to create a buffer. Okay, I have, I'm after the initial pH, but I have not reached the equivalence point. This is the buffer zone of a weak, strong titration problem. So uh, we can quickly figure out how much acid we have left. We uh, started with 0 0.0010 moles. We are going to add and basically destroy this many moles of the acid from the base. Remember, again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio when we wrote our balanced equation for the overall reaction. So if I add that much base, that's how much acid um, I'm going to react and destroy here. So I now have 0 0.0005 moles of the acid left. Okay, but remember here now, um, in this particular problem, if that's how much acid that I essentially destroyed, this is a one-to-one -one ratio type of problem. Um, I also now formed that amount, the 0 0.00050 moles of the conjugate. Okay, so... Very important to understand here that this particular part of a weak, strong problem is a buffer. The definition of a buffer is when you have a weak acid or base and it's conjugate present. If you remember back to the equation, we generated some of that salt, some of that conjugate here um, that is going to allow us to form this buffer. All right. So. Now that we know how many moles of acid and moles of the conjugate we formed, uh, we have to actually go through and figure out the concentration of these. So the acid has not been neutralized, so there's some weak acid present, and we have generated the conjugate in this particular reaction, and there's a certain moles of that now. So we have to take that into account as we do our buffer. So as we already figured out here, we uh, still have 0 0.0005 moles of my acid still remaining, but it's now floating in 50 milliliters total of solution. We started with 40 milliliters, we added 10 milliliters, so it's a total of 50 milliliters. So we can convert this to liters, there's a thousand mils for every liter and this will give me the concentration of the acid that I still have remaining okay so it's 0 0.01 molar and I'm gonna label this this is my concentration of my weak acid all right but remember here now you also uh, generated um, a certain amount of the conjugate here so we have 0 0.00050 moles of the conjugate that we formed, and this is floating around in the same 50 milliliters. We can convert that here to liters, and the concentration of the conjugate at this particular point, 
would also be 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.01 molar. And that's the concentration of the conjugate base that I formed here. So remember, I have a weak acid and it's conjugate present. That's the definition of the buffer. So I have to figure out the concentration of each. And now that I know the concentration of each currently present, I can uh, plug this into the henderson hasselbach equation and actually figure out what the pH will be. So before I can use that equation, I need the pKa. Remember, pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka. So uh, the pKa here is going to be equal to the negative log of the 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. So my pKa ends up being equal to 4.20. So uh, we are using the pH version here of the henderson hasselbach equation because we have a weak acid in its conjugate. So that's going to be equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base or the conjugate all over the concentration of the acid. All right, so the pH will be equal to 4.20 plus the log of 0 .0, 0 0.01 and the concentration of 0 0.01 on the bottom. So um, this ends up being equal to 4.2 with correct sig figs here. Um, so the reason why this was starred is because if you didn't realize it, you were actually at the half equivalence point here. Uh, you had a certain moles of acid, and we added or neutralized half of that amount. Uh, so we know at the um, half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. So if you didn't realize it, you just go through and solve the problem, and you get the same answer. But if you, if you were able to realize that you could quickly uh, solve the problem, realizing that you had the pH being equal to the pKa. But it's very important to be able to go through and actually solve for the buffering region here of a weak, strong titration problem. All right, so now we're ready to go on and solve part C after 20 milliliters of the base was added. So this time now... I have 20 milliliters of the base added. I need to figure out how many moles of that were added. So I know there's a thousand mils for every liter, and I know the concentration of my sodium hydroxide is 0 0.050 moles okay, of my base. That's per liter. So I added 0 0.0010 moles of base, okay, I already calculated uh, earlier here how many moles of acid I started with, and at this point, we are now at the equivalence point, okay, because the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base, and that's the definition of the equivalence point, okay, so I added enough base to completely neutralize the acid, okay? So in a strong, strong problem, the pH would be automatically 7, uh, but that's not the case here for a weak, strong problem, okay? Remember here, we said that we are doing a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. We would expect the salt that is generated okay, in this reaction, to hydrolyze with water at the equivalence point to produce a pH that is more basic because it was from a weak acid and a strong base. So we would expect here the pH at the equivalence point to be greater than 7, okay? So we know now that if we added that many moles of base, this is a one-to-one -one ratio from our reaction that we wrote, that there's going to be that much, that exact amount of the conjugate salt formed. So we now have 0 0.0010 moles of the conjugate salt here 
being generated in this reaction. So the acid was neutralized, okay, uh, but we generated um, that much of the conjugate salt because it's a one to one ratio. So in order to actually figure out the pH here, we are going to need to do an ice table. The part of the conjugate is going to hydrolyze with water, but we need the concentration. It's very important to remember that you know the moles of the conjugate salts here, but you're going to need the concentration of that. So I know that we form 0 0.0010 moles of the conjugate salt, and it's now floating around in 60 milliliters. Okay, we started with 40 milliliters, we added 20 milliliters, so it's floating around in 60 milliliters. There's a thousand milliliters for every liter, and we know the concentration of the conjugate is 0 0.017 molar, and that's my concentration here of my conjugate salt. Okay, so um, remember here from our original equation. All right, we have to generate a base, so it's going to be the anion part of the salt that formed that's going to hydrolyze with water to generate me OH minus. So you have to write this equation here. We have the C7H5O2 minus, the anion part of the salt, reacting with water at the equivalence point. It's going to hydrolyze, it's going to be in equilibrium to form the benzoic acid, okay, plus OH minus. That's how we're going to get a more basic pH here at the equivalence point. We have to generate OH minus. So think about that. If you know it has to be a uh, basic pH, you want the part of the salt that's going to hydrolyze with water, okay, to generate OH minus. Okay, we don't want to generate an H plus here. We want to generate an OH minus because we know it has to be more basic. So that's why we need the anion part of the salt to react or hydrolyze with the water here. Okay, so we can create our ice table real quick. Uh, we know the initial concentration because we just found it. We know that water does not participate in the ice table because it's a liquid. Both of the products were zero initially. This is going to change, lose some value of x. These both are going to add some value of x. So this is going to be 0 0.017 uh, minus x molar at equilibrium. Both of these are just going to be x molar at equilibrium. Okay, so we figured out the concentration of the uh, conjugate salt that formed. And we wrote a hydrolysis reaction that generated, okay, the OH minus because we knew we wanted to be at a more basic pH because that salt came from a weak acid and a strong base. So we're at the equivalence point. The uh, moles of acid equal moles of base. So the acid is completely neutralized, but we generated a salt that is going to hydrolyze and give us a more basic pH. So we set up our ice table. And now we actually have to go through and find the pH. So because we generated OH minus here, we actually need a Kb. So we know that Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so if we want to solve here, um, for a Kb, we take 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by the Ka that they gave us, 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5th. And this is equal to the Kb, which would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, remember, we need a Kb here because we formed an OH minus. So if we write our Kb expression, Kb is equal to the products over reactants here. Okay, and our reactant here, all right, concentration of the C7H5O2 minus on the bottom. All right, so there's my Kb expression. I can plug in what I know. Uh, we just found the Kb to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, that's going to be equal to 
x squared. Both of the products in the ice, ice table were x. So we have on the bottom 0 0.017 minus x. The x on the bottom there is negligible, so it can be crossed out. And when you solve this for x, you get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6th molar, because this is a concentration. But remember, x in your ice table represents the concentration of OH minus here. This is not H plus, this is OH minus, because that's what we generated. So we can find the pOH, which is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So the negative log of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 5.8. Zero. So that's the pOH. We know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. 14 minus 5.80 gives us a uh, final pH here of 8.20. And this should make sense. It is above 7. It is more basic, which is what we expect for this weak acid strong base titration. We are not at a pH of 7 at the equivalence point. Part D now wants us to figure out the pH after 35 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide has been added. So I can quickly figure out how many moles of the base I added. So this time I added 35 milliliters. There's a thousand milliliters for every liter. And I know the concentration was 0 0.050 moles of base for every liter, and I added 0 0.00175 moles of OH minus, or just the base itself. This is how much I added, okay? So we already know how much acid we started with. We already know that you know, we've reached our equivalence point when we added 20 milliliters. So we know here that we're past the equivalence point. Okay, so I, I know that all of the acid is going to be completely neutralized and I'm going to have just base left over. So I added 0 0.00175 moles. I started with 0 0.0010 moles of the acid. Okay, so this is the moles of acid started with. So um, the acid is completely neutralized and completely gone. All right, and this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So because of that, we know we have 0 0.00075 moles of my base left over here. So we've actually added base in excess. Um, this is, though, now a strong base. This was sodium hydroxide, so it's 100% dissociated. So if we can figure out the concentration of the base that's left here, we can quickly find the pH. So I have 0 0.00075 moles of the base, and this is now floating around in a grand total of 75 milliliters of solution. Started with 40 milliliters, added 35 milliliters to it, so it's 75 milliliters. We know that there's 1,000 milliliters for every liter. So the concentration here is 0 0.010 molar, and this is the concentration of OH minus. Remember, this is NaOH, it's a strong base. That is the concentration of the base itself. And because uh, NaOH has one Na plus for every one OH minus, uh, if you know the concentration of the NaOH itself, you know the concentration of the OH minus. Uh, so this is the concentration of the OH minus. So this would give us a pOH. pOH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So the negative log of the 0. 0, 0.010 0 equals 2.00. Well, pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So 14 minus 2.00 gives us a final pH here of 12.00. Okay, so uh, this is how you go through and solve for the different intervals of a weak, strong problem.
Remember, you have to pay attention to uh, which part you're in. There's certain steps you must do if it's initial or if you're in the buffering region or if you're at the equivalence point or if you're after the equivalence point. So remember, this was for a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Uh, if it was reversed, it's basically the same steps, but you have to pay attention to whether you have an acid or a base and you know, you're solving for a pH or a pOH. So that's how you do one of these weak, strong titration problems.